let's turn to the development of the kidney um, and return to this image that we looked at the very beginning of our discussion when we were talking about the uh, formation of germ cells in the gonad. At that time, we pointed out that in the early embryo, there is a ridge of mesoderm on the posterior abdominal wall. And as you can see, it's a, it's a very long ridge of mesoderm, and we called it the urogenital ridge. And we said part of that urogenital ridge is what's going to become the gonad, and we talked about that at that time. And the remainder of this, this much larger portion of the urogenital ridge, is going to uh, have something to do with the development of the urinary system, development of kidney. So what we have is this very long ridge of mesoderm, sometimes called intermediate mesoderm, just lateral to the somites. And that intermediate mesoderm is going to form kidney structures. So if we look at this image here, here is that long ridge of mesoderm that we were just talking about. And different portions of this ridge of mesoderm will develop into kidney-related structures at different times. What, it, what happens is it follows a cranial to caudal gradient. In other words, the cranial end differentiates first, and then more caudally, and then more caudally, and then more caudally, and then more caudally, and so forth. But at the same time, as this wave of differentiation is progressing quarterly, there's a subsequent wave of degeneration that's also going from cranial to caudal. So this differentiates. When this is differentiating, this is degenerating. When this is differentiating, this is degenerating, and so on right down along the ridge. Now the uppermost end of this uh, urinary portion of the urogenital ridge differentiates very early, very quickly, and degenerates almost immediately thereafter. That portion is called the pronephros, and it never actually functions as a kidney uh, in human embryos. In lower species, it does function, but not in humans. Then the much larger and longer and more caudal portion of this um, ridge of mesoderm differentiates. And this is the part that's called the mesonephros. And again, there's a sort of a wave of differentiation and degeneration. And this mesonephric portion, in fact, does function as a kidney in the embryo. That is to say, it actually does filter blood and it does produce urine. Now, since it's producing urine, that urine has to go someplace. And so there is a duct that's seen here. There's a duct that runs right alongside the mesonephros, and that duct is called the mesonephric duct. And the mesonephric duct will carry the urine that's being produced by the mesonephros, and will carry that urine all the way down and empty into the most caudal end of the gut tube, the part that's going to be called the urogenital sinus, which will then open to the exterior through the cloaca which is what will eventually become the urogenital openings in the, uh, in the uh, embryo. And so that urine is able to get out of the embryo, urine produced by the mesonephros goes into the mesonephric duct, into the gut tube, and then out into the amniotic cavity. So it's important to uh, realize that much of the amniotic fluid, most of the amniotic fluid, is in fact urine fetal urine. That's an important point to recognize because when there is an abnormality in the urinary system that results in the fetus producing too little urine, you would expect to see the result of that in a, an amniotic cavity that has too little amniotic fluid in it, less than the normal amount of amniotic fluid. And that's called oligohydramnios oligohydramnios means less than the normal amount of amniotic fluid, and that's typically indicative of an abnormality of the urinary system, not producing enough urine. Just to, before we get back to the kidney, just to follow that thought through to its conclusion, since this uh, fetus, embryo and then fetus, is putting urine out into the amniotic cavity continuously, pretty much, this uh, fluid has to go somewhere, otherwise the amniotic cavity would just get larger and larger and larger and larger through our pregnancy. So what happens is that the fetus swallows the amniotic fluid. 
So, and, and that's an important part of the development of the GI tract, that in order to develop the swallowing mechanism, the fetus has to basically practice swallowing. And so the amniotic fluid is being swallowed, this urine is being swallowed, ends up being reprocessed by the fetus and then excreted again after filtered through the kidney back into the, into the amniotic cavity. So there's this continual process of, of uh, excretion of urine into the amniotic cavity and then the swallowing of the amniotic fluid by the fetus. If there is a defect that results in a, in a difficulty in swallowing, and now that could be a defect relating to the GI tract, such as an obstruction to the esophagus, for example, or, or any other obstruction that would uh, impair the ability of the fetus to ingest fluids. Or it could be a result of neurological defects, so that even though the GI tract is intact, the swallowing reflexes aren't functioning so that the uh, fetus isn't swallowing. In either event, that would result in too much amniotic fluid since the urine is being put out, but it's not being swallowed. And that would be called polyhydramnios. So an excess of amniotic fluid is, an indi is indicative of a difficulty in swallowing that might be GI tract in origin or it might be neurological in origin. Okay, coming back now to the development of the kidney structures. So we said that the mesonephros is producing urine, dumping it into the mesonephric duct. But we said that there's this wave of degeneration that's fo following the um, wave of differentiation. So the mesonephros is going to degenerate and will end up being replaced by what will be the definitive kidney, which is demonstrated down here as the metanephros or the metanephric mass or the metanephrogenic blastema. There are a lot of different names for it. So we're going to lose the mesonephros as well. But even though we lose the mesonephros, the mesonephric duct, which was being used to conduct urine from the mesonephros, is retained in males. Is retained in males. And in males, its function is converted over to a genital tract function, and it becomes the ductus deferens. So the mesonephric duct in males becomes the ductus deferens. Remember that the gonad was developing right next to where the mesonephros was developing, so that kind of makes sense now that the, du that the mesonephric duct will become the ductus deferens in males. In females, the mesonephric duct will degenerate along with the mesonephros. OK, 